Docks from Maine to Virginia are idle tonight. 30,000 longshoremen are on strike against major East Coast ports. Cars, lumber, and containerized cargo are not being unloaded. 3,500 of the strikers are in the Philadelphia area. Charles Thomas reports tonight that the key issue is wages. The mood on the picket lines was a mix of anger and confusion. In the union's long history in Philadelphia and the rest of the Northeast, it has never settled for a wage cut. I think this is a big play going along with the rest of the country trying to break all the unions. Locally, the work stoppage involves some 3,500 longshoremen at Philadelphia, Camden, Gloucester City, and Wilmington. Dozens of loaded cargo ships can only wait offshore as the union upholds a long-time tradition of not working without a contract. The longshoremen also lived up to their long-time reputation for holding violent strikes. When a non-union truck driver tried to run the picket line here at the Holt Marine Terminal in Camden today, he was dragged from his truck and beaten. We just busted one guy up already this morning. They opened the door and dragged me out of the truck. As soon as I hit the ground, I was like, that's here. And I was hit right on the top of the head. Under their old contract, dock workers here were paid $17 an hour. The Philadelphia Marine Trade Association has offered a two-tiered wage, $17 an hour to unload containerized cargo, but only $14 an hour for loose cargo. The association also wants an end to the union's guaranteed annual income program that pays longshoremen between jobs. We just feel that we have to do something uh, uh, dramatic because of the competition that has happened in trying to hold cargoes that we presently enjoy. Most of the cargo ships still waiting on the Delaware River contain meat and fresh produce from South America and building materials from elsewhere overseas. The union vows that none of it will land until the strike is settled. They know things are tight, and they know that they'll get scab labor to work if they could. If we let them, and we're not going to let them. On the waterfront, Charles Thomas, the 10 o'clock news. Now they are 30,000 strong longshoremen who are walking the docks instead of working them. From Maine to Virginia, the strike by longshoremen that's crippling 11 major ports along the eastern seaboard is approaching the start of its second day now. In the Philadelphia area, the walkout by some 2,000 dock workers could cost the local economy some $2 million a day. In New York today, it was more than just cargo being stalled by the strike. Passengers on the luxury liner, the QE2, Queen Elizabeth II, had to carry their own bags when they got home from their vacation cruises because nobody was crossing the picket lines. And at the docks in Gloucester City, New Jersey, longshoremen picked up picket signs today instead of cargo coming in from the Delaware River. Now, what's the impact of this strike throughout our area tonight? Well, two of the biggest ports are closed down, Wilmington and Philadelphia. And Devlin begins our Channel 10 team coverage tonight from the Port of Philadelphia. Yes, man. We should, we are at the fight. Right here, Independent Pier men are at the fight. Nobody's coming in, nobody's going out. Night one on the picket line for striking longshoremen. Resentment running high here at Pier 80. I feel like we're, we should be out the fight. They want us to work for $14 an hour. We made that in 1982. We are going to only make, if we accept their contract, $14.50 an hour in 1989. The contract that expired yesterday guaranteed longshoremen an annual salary of $25,500, whether they worked or not. Management wants workers to take a $3 an hour pay cut when unloading non-container cargo. They come to the piers in cashmere coats. Well, I come to work like this, and they are making money. To... But port officials argue Philadelphia has lost business in recent years because of high labor costs failure to modernize, and the long-distance ships have to come up river to unload here. The striking longshoremen here say one of their biggest problems is from their non-union competition along the East Coast. Worrying those non-union terminals will profit from the strike, one local president urges his membership tonight to work shipments of perishable food. We have other, other ports who are trying to uh, get the perishable goods from us, and if we are going to be so foolish as to strike uh, uh, things that we normally work, uh, I think that uh, we might have to pay for that. We're Strikers tonight worry how this one's going to last. They say there's no going back now, though, especially when it comes to their salaries. On Delaware Avenue and Devlin, Channel 10 News Update. This is Chris Long, and this is the Port of Wilmington. There was work being done here today, but only by warehousemen, not affected by the walkout. These are one-ton rolls of newsprint being loaded onto train cars it will end up as your local newspaper, including the Inquirer and the Daily News. These rolls were offloaded from this huge barge before the strike began. 
But for now, the roles that remain on board cannot be offloaded. Canadian Captain Cecil Kilfoy's tugboat is hooked to the barge. What do you and your tugboat crew do? Just wait? Well, we wait and, uh, you know, I don't know how long. It's up to the company in St. John when he wants us to leave. We'll probably wait for a few days just to see what'll happen. Wilmington's port is small, but it's growing in volume year by year. In 1985, 2.8 million tons of products came in here, an increase of 11% over previous years. It's also a major entry spot for fruit, mainly from Costa Rica. Tons of bananas come into this Del Monte terminal. Diane Jaron hopes that the strike won't last long. She was shutting down her snack wagon at the port today. How much Philadelphia's waterfront explained to dock workers their present contract has been extended 45 days. Negotiations will continue during that period. Most of the longshoremen were relieved the long strike has been averted. At least we're very now. glad that we had the chance to get back to work and talk while we are working. But we just like to send a message that if the $17 doesn't stick, then we will be back here again on November 15th or whenever the extension expires. Money is the big sticking point in the contract talks, with management wanting the workers to take a cut in hourly wages. Meanwhile, you return to work even though a settlement has not been reached. The present contract, we understand, will stay in effect while talks continue. A management spokesman says that the three-day-old strike ended because neither side really wanted to risk losing business to southern ports unaffected by the walkout. But as Ad Devlin reports tonight, the union says it came out on top. Well, I think we won. Our idea was stayed $17 an hour for the 45 days, then we'll see what happens after that. It was why they walked in the first place. Management offered to extend the longshoremen's contract, but only if they took a $3 an hour pay cut when working bulk cargo. That's most of what comes into the Port of Philadelphia. Emphatically, the longshoremen said no. Tonight, they have a 45-day extension at the old wages. And they thought the timing was right for them, I th uh, for them and, I, and I think that they thought it was time to break us, and we're not going to be broke. But the longshoremen still do not have a contract. Recent years have sliced union membership of the Philadelphia port in more than half. Still, one local president told Alan Frio on the Channel 10 News at 6 o'clock he believes longshoremen have not lost bargaining power. Yes, we're in a very strong bargaining, bargaining position because of the fact that we have been working very closely with the mayor, with the Chamber of Commerce, with the, uh, with the, uh, the, the port corporation trying to do ways to enhance this port. The longshoremen say if, in fact, management tries again to cut their wages during the actual contract negotiations, they'll pick up these signs again. We're ready to go back to work. But we don't want a two-tiered wage system. No way. So while tonight there is relief that the strike is over, and while tomorrow the longshoremen will be back at work, there is also worry. Worry that this may just be round one. Alan? Okay, Ann, thanks.